Inside our lungs, we have specialized structures called alveolar sacs. And these alveolar sacs contain many tiny balloon-like structures called alveoli. And within the alveoli is where gas exchange actually takes place. Oxygen is exchanged for carbon dioxide. Now, before we actually discuss how the process of gas exchange takes place within each individual alveoli, let's discuss what the structure of the alveolar sac is and what the individual alveolus actually looks like. Now, recall in our discussion on the respiratory system, we said that when we inhale, when we breathe in air, the air enters via the nose, travels through the nasal cavity, and then enters our pharynx, and then connects with our larynx, the voice box, which then connects with the trachea, our windpipe. Now, the trachea ultimately bifurcates, it divides into two bronchi, and each one of these bronchi subdivides into to very tiny bronchioles that permeate through our lungs and at the end of each bronchiole at the end of this very tiny air passageway are the alveolar sacs and this is shown by this diagram so Structure number two is the bronchial that is shown in brown. It basically extends all the way into this space number seven and space number seven is the alveolar sac space. And this entire orange section is our alveolar sac that is described by number six. Now, if we notice along our bronchial, we also have these regions shown by red. So this portion, this portion, this portion, and that is our smooth muscle that extends around our bronchial and it is capable of contracting and dilating that bronchial as needed. Now, notice we have many of these individual tiny balloon-like structures shown by number one, and those are our alveoli. That is where gas exchange actually takes place. So essentially, this space, number seven, the alveolar sac space con uh, connects directly to the space within each one of these alveoli, and that is known as the alveolar space. So if we examine each one of these alveol uh, alveoli, we basically get the following diagram. And the space inside each one of these tiny alveoli looks something like this. That's the alveolar space it's not the same as the alveolar sac space, but they are connected to one another. And so the concentration of gas molecules inside the alveolar sac space number seven and the alveolar space number eight is exactly the same. Now, before we actually take a look at the structure of the actual alveolus, let's discuss what this blue section is and what the red section is. So this blue uh, section is our blood vessel, the pulmonary artery that actually brings deoxygenated blood from the heart to our lungs. While the red blood vessel is our blood vessel called the pulmonary vein that brings oxygenated blood from each individual alveolus and to the heart of our body, specifically to the left atrium of our body. So remember, the pulmonary artery carries deoxygenated blood away from the heart and to the lungs, while the pulmonary vein carries oxygenated blood away from the lungs and to our heart. So we see that this entire section number six is the alveolar sac that contains many of these specialized balloon-shaped structures we call alveolar alveoli and within these alveoli is where gas exchange actually takes place so we exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide so remember oxygen is a very important molecule that is used by our individual cells in the process of cellular respiration to actually produce ATP the energy molecules used by the cell and carbon dioxide is a waste product of cellular metabolism and so we have to actually excrete it to the outside of our body and this is what happens inside our lungs specifically inside each alveoli so 
Now, let's actually zoom in on one of these alveoli, and this is what a single alveolus actually looks like. So we have this connecting point, this region here that connects number eight, the alveolar space to number seven, the alveolar sac space. And because we have this direct connection, the concentration of our air molecules inside eight is the same as inside seven, which is the same as our, actually no, it's not the same. So. Uh, in 7 and 8, we have the same exact concentration of gas molecules. Now, notice that around the entire alveolus, we basically have the system of blood vessels. So, this blood vessel is our pulmonary arterial that brings deoxygenated blood and it loops around the entire alveolus until it gets to this section and this is our capillary. It's the pulmonary capillary. So, number seven is the pulmonary capillary and number five is our pulmonary arterial. Now, within the capillary, we have exchange taking place. Oxygen goes into the capillary and our carbon dioxide leaves the capillaries and goes into region number eight. And then our oxygenated blood travels via this blood vessel, number six, which is our pulmonary venule. It's a very small type of pulmonary vein. Now, let's take a look at the actual membrane within which we have this diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide taking place. So, notice we have two important types of cells within the alveolus. We have the cell labeled as number four, that is our alveolar cell type number two. And what this cell does is it produces and releases the pulmonary surfactant that is necessary to prevent the alveolus from actually collapsing when we exhale and to decrease the surface tension and therefore the pressure that is needed to actually inflate our alveolus. Now, uh, the cells shown by these green cells, number one, so if we zoom in on this small cross section, we get this blown up image. And so number one is our epithelial cells of the alveolus. These are the cells that line the wall of the alveolus and the wall is shown by number two, that's the orange section. And this consists of an extracellular matrix we call the basement membrane. Now, the basement membrane actually connects the epithelial cells of the alveolus to the endothelial cells of our blood vessels. So these cells shown in blue are the endothelial cells. So these cells are the endothelial cells of our pulmonary arterial and these cells are, our, are, are, are the endothelial cells of our pulmonary venule. Um, okay, so now that we know what the structure of our alveolus actually looks like, let's discuss how gas exchange actually takes place and why oxygen is taken up by the capillaries but carbon dioxide is released by the capillaries. So how does gas exchange actually take place within each individual alveolus within our alveolus uh, alveolar sac? So, Recall that the right ventricle of the heart pumps deoxygenated blood into the pulmonary trunk which extends into the pulmonary arteries and these arteries bring deoxygenated blood into the lungs. Now eventually the pulmonary arteries divide into smaller arteries and they ultimately divide into these pulmonary arterioles that is shown by number five and these pulmonary arterioles essentially circle around the alveoli until they connect with the pulmonary capillary this section shown by number seven so let's zoom in on this region that contains this capillary section here so we basically get the following diagram so we have the pulmonary arteriole, we have the pulmonary capillary, and we have the pulmonary venule. So our deoxygenated blood essentially travels along the pulmonary arteriole until it gets to our capillary, which is this section right here. 
Now, deoxygenated blood has a relatively high concentration of carbon dioxide and a relatively low concentration of oxygen compared to the concentrations of these molecules, gas molecules, inside the alveolar space. So this region here is region number eight, the alveolar space. Now, within the alveolar space, we have a partial pressure of oxygen equaling to 105 millimeters of mercury while the partial pressure due to our carbon dioxide molecules that is 40 millimeters of mercury. Now inside the lumen of our pulmonary arterial these are the concentrations these are the partial pressures of these same gas molecules. Notice the oxygen is 40 millimeters millimeters per mercury which is less than inside the alveolar space while the carbon dioxide has a higher concentration 45 millimeters per mercury inside the lumen of the arterial compared to our alveolar space so we have a difference in pressure and whenever we have a difference in pressure, we know we have a pressure gradient and these gas molecules will begin to move down their gradient from a high pressure to a low pressure. So as soon as the blood enters the capillary, we have this relatively thin wall that consists of the endothelium of the blood vessel, the capillary, the basement membrane, as well as the epithelium of our alveolus. And this entire layer allows our diffusion of these gas molecules. And this layer that consists of these three different things is known as the respiratory membrane inside the capillary that allows diffusion to take place. And so carbon dioxide will diffuse down its pressure gradient from a high grade, from a high pressure to a low pressure. And oxygen will also diffuse down its gradient, but it will move from the outside to the inside of the capillary, also down its gradient from a value of 105 to a value of 45 millimeters of mercury. So this is exactly why our exchange takes place in the first place because there is a pressure gradient that exists between the space of the alveolus and the lumen of our capillary where the blood actually flows. Now by the time the blood actually ends up within our lumen of the a pulmonary venule, the concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen will be the same inside the lumen as inside our alveolar space. And that's exactly why the diffusion of these two gas molecules essentially stops. And then our pulmonary venule connects with larger pulmonary arteries and that carry the oxygenated blood into the left atrium of our heart. So once again, the deoxygenated blood brought by the pulmonary arterial contains a relatively low partial pressure for oxygen and a relatively high partial pressure for carbon dioxide compared to the space inside our alveolus. Therefore, due to this pressure difference, due to the existence of this pressure gradient, oxygen will diffuse into the capillary and carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the capillary down their pressure gradient. And this diffusion will continue until our partial pressure concentra uh, the partial uh, concentration or the partial pressure for oxygen is the same on the inside of the blood vessel as our inside space, the space inside our alveolus. And the same, is, the same thing is true for the carbon dioxide. The diffusion of carbon dioxide will continue until the partial pressure inside our lumen of our blood vessel is the same as our alveolar space. So we see that inside each individual alveolus, the reason that gas exchange takes place is because of the existence of a pressure gradient a difference in concentration between these two types of gas molecules found in the lumen and inside the alveolar space.